Hi, this is Mrs. Hansen here to tell you about the book, The Things They Carry, which is a collection of short stories set in Vietnam during the Vietnam War in the late 60s, early 70s, told from the viewpoint of a young soldier, young American soldier who was there fighting. So the Vietnam War is a pretty complicated uh, situation and um, people were confused about it then, they're confused about it now, and they're gonna be confused about it in the future. Um, and it just so happens that the narrator of this collection of short stories uh, was also confused. And I'd like to read you a portion of the book that explains his confusion. And I want you to keep in mind that this was the viewpoint of someone who was already fighting in the war, who was committed and who was working really hard to support his fellow soldiers and complete this mission. In June of 1968, a month after graduating from McAllister College, I was drafted to fight a war I hated. I was 21 years old, young, yes, and politically naive, but even so, the American war in Vietnam seemed to me wrong. Certain blood was being shed for uncertain reasons. I saw no unity of purpose, no consensus on matters of philosophy or history or law. The very facts were shrouded in uncertainty. Was it a civil war? A war of national liberation or simple aggression? Who started it and when and why? And another thing to remember when reading this book is, it is, um, it, re it reflects the complexity of this uh, war very well in that it is a collection of short stories and not a novel. So that means that while you're reading it, you're not gonna be reading one long story, telling uh, one long story in different chapters. Instead, you're gonna be reading standalone short stories that all feature the same characters, but it's not set together not put together like a novel. So if you're not paying attention, if you're not aware from this right from the start, you're gonna be reading this and not understanding how the chapters fit together. They're not fitting together. They're standalone short stories that are a series of moving and often disturbing war stories uh, where you're gonna meet people like this soldier who wears his girlfriend's pantyhose around his neck for good luck. And the girlfriend already broke up with him and he still wears her pantyhose around his neck. You'll meet another soldier who actually blows up an orphaned puppy. And then you'll read a story about soldiers who wonder why a young Vietnamese girl dances through the ruins of her bombed village. So collection of short stories, loosely grouped together, same narrator, same characters, short stories, not a novel. Another thing that's really interesting about this book is that the narrator seems like he is the author. And the author kind of did that on purpose. It wasn't an accident, um, but it's always kind of going through my mind when I read these stories. Did this really happen? What's he making up? What's true? I don't know what's true and what's not true, and I don't know if it matters. This is what the author, this is what the narrator rather has to say about this question. 43 years old and the war occurred half a lifetime ago. And yet the remembering makes it now. And sometimes remembering will lead to a story which makes it forever. That's what stories are for. Stories are for joining the past to the future. Stories are for those late hours in the night when you can't remember how you got from where you were to where you are. Stories are for eternity, when memory is erased and when there is nothing to remember except the story. So if you're interested in the power of storytelling, if you like to tell stories with your friends, what kinds of stories are important to you? Those are the kinds of questions you can keep in your mind when you're reading the things they carried.